Now, let me bring to you my personality and a little bit of my background. This is a picture of where I was born and raised. There's a little village in southeastern part of Iran, close to a city called Sirjan. The population today is 97. And if you Google it, it actually says 98. The reason it says 98 because my mom always puts my name in there every year <laughs> on census. I kid you not. If nature had its way, I would be that guy on the top right with a load of pistachios on my back. It's a pistachio farming community. If the nature adds its way, you become a pistachio farmer or a goat herder. The bottom right is an architecture of that area. It's a cooling tower. And then bottom left, it's me at around 10 years old. Okay? Now, I had a privilege. My mom was the only woman in the village who knew how to read and write. And to calibrate you, at that time, 50% of the kids who were born, they did not see their fifth birthday. Polio, measles, chicken pox, you name it, they got them. In fact, my mom gave 12 births. Six of us survived. By birth, I'm number two. By survival, I'm number one. As I mentioned, I had a privilege, and that privilege was my mom knew how to read and write, and she was very demanding. I would work in the field alongside my mom and dad in the morning, in the evening, summertime, whenever I needed. If I didn't work, I wouldn't eat. One day while we're working in the field, my mom, probably I was five, maybe six years old, she holds me by my ear and says, do you see these planes flying? I say, yep. She says, you're going to go make that plane. You are not becoming a pistachio farmer. You are not becoming a goat herder. And guess what? I truly believed her. So what I did was I worked through, got my high school diploma, worked for a couple of years to get a ticket to come to America. And when I went to tell mom that I'm going to America to make those planes, she was devastated. She says, I was kidding. I said, mom, I was listening. <laughs> okay? And then to America I came. It was June 12, 1978 at 2 p.m., a Pan Am 747 landed in New York. I was on it. I didn't know a soul. Didn't have much money. Didn't speak much English. Other than that, I was doing quite well. But I had two big dreams. I wanted to go to MIT, and I wanted to work for Boeing. As I stand in front of you, I have failed both of those dreams. So you're, you're listening to a failure here, OK? Just to, to, to calibrate you. So, I ended up coming out and looking at how the culture and the alphabet and things look like. This is a stop sign in both languages. In, in, in Western world, you write from left to right. In Middle East, you write from right to left. If you see me confusing my right and left, this is the reason, guys. Okay? It started when I landed here. But I went to Boston, and I started working any jobs that I could to put myself through school. I started at the University of Massachusetts a couple of times trying to get to MIT. Pretty soon I realized Boston was very expensive. It was almost impossible financially to get to MIT. I need to find somewhere else. Old Dominion University on this side of Mississippi was the cheapest mechanical engineering school that I could find. Went there, got my bachelor's degree. Got my master's degree at the University of Cincinnati. I started looking for jobs, and I actually worked for four other companies before I came to GE. After a couple of weeks, the satisfaction wasn't there, and I would quit those jobs until August of 1984 when I came to GE. 
This is a picture of our advanced course graduation in 1985. GE was very different than it is today. There were several significant challenges. For example, I was asked to change my name to John. They told me, and they meant well, they told me, Muhammad, you're bright, just change the damn name, you do well. I couldn't do it because it was a name that my mom and dad had given me. Finished a course, started working my way up, started as a design engineer on F-101, which, which powered the B-1 bomber. And then challenges continued. About six months into GE, I became a single dad. My son, Darius, was about two years old. I was terrified and devastated, but leaned into it. There were times that at the last minute I needed to find a babysitter so I could travel. There were times that I had to sneak the kid in so he could stay with me while I worked here. We, we didn't have the ability to work from home and the flexibility to work from home that we have today. And you can see the respectful um, gesture he's giving me when I'm trying to get, take his picture. Today he's a plant manager in supply chain. Those early exposures actually worked well. Back to the dialogue with mom. Remember I told you she wanted me to go make the planes? I brought her here a couple of years ago in Learning Center. So I'm proud of the G90. I'm showing her how wonderful it is. She looks at it. She says, this is not the plane. <laughs> I said, Mom, without it, the planes won't fly. She says, I understand, but this is not the plane. I just want you to get that. I was like, yeah, I do get it. And my son, Darius, looks at her, looks at me. He goes, I am so glad I'm not her son. <laughs> and it's so true, so true. Listen, um, this has been my story. I am 100% sure you have your stories. I've been lucky. People have taken risk on me. People have coached me. People have mentored me. I've been very, very lucky. Here are a few things for you. Okay? Be positive. No matter how hard things get, don't become a victim. Once you get the victim mentality, you can't fight back. Number two, take on new challenges. As Henry Ford says it, if you think you can or you think you can't, usually you're right. Number three, be authentic and be resilient. Remember back to the name change? John doesn't look good on me. Okay, I kept it. Number four, listen more than you speak. My mom still tells me, you got two ears, one mouth. There's a reason for it. Listen twice, speak once. Take jobs most people won't. And then last, help others, especially the younger ones. If you see some young engineers, young employees who don't know their way around, or they look different, help them out. They may grow up to be somebody very big one day. Thank you so much. I appreciate your listening.